So this is part three of my bar build series. Um, so this is basically the way our living room looked before. It's actually a second living room. So our primary living room is connected to our kitchen. And uh, this room we really didn't use that much. So uh, this was probably the best thing we ever did to this room is convert it into an actual uh, nice bar space. So this is how it looks now. Um, Again, this is at night, so you have the full effect of the LED lighting and the TVs uh, set to a fireplace scene. Uh, it's obviously a lot better. Start out with this sketch here. Um, we didn't execute exactly to what you see in the sketch here, but uh, pretty close, pretty close. Um, you know, this this view here is basically looking into the room from the uh, the doorway, and as the page, picture fades away, you can see it. Uh, almost achieved that perfectly except for a couple details in the ceiling uh, feature and the uh, you know where you hang the glasses and the uh, TVs and the uh, bottle holders uh, this whole layout was first done in Visio as you can see here um, you, what you want to do is kind of draw your room in Visio looking from the top down do everything to scale so your the scale on the top and the, on the left is in feet um, then you could kind of draw what you want and, and size it out and make sure that everything fits and everything uh, makes sense uh, where you can, you know, from the flow of traffic and where, where the seats are going to go and, you know, <clears throat> the bar surface. Um, you obviously want to um, do an authentic bar, so you want to make your bar height uh, standard, but one of the things you don't want to do is make your bar tops uh, super wide like you would see in a, in a, in a standard bar because that's, that eats up a lot of your floor space and it's gonna make the room a lot, look a lot smaller. In addition, the, the space behind the bar where you, you can walk around and you're serving drinks, um, that you wanna minimize to just enough where you can kinda of work back there. Because again, it's, it's, uh, if this is gonna be in a standard house, obviously it's gonna be a room or a basement or something that, that you have to kinda of fit um, and maximize space. So. The more narrow your bar top is, you know, 10 inches, 12 inches at max is what you want to go. Uh, the the better you're gonna, it's gonna fit, and it's gonna make the room look a lot bigger. And there's no penalty to have a narrow bar top. It's uh, it's people don't even notice it. What they do notice is if I had made this an 18 inch uh, wide bar top and a, you know, four or five foot space behind it, that the room would be substantially smaller and less usable. Uh, and again, you're not gonna have seven bartenders run around behind your bar. It's a home bar. Uh, one of the things you see is that's different is the iPad wall mount. Um, I was going to put an iPad in the center there, and I kind of uh, decided not to. And you'll see uh, in later videos or later in this video um, why I chose not to. So it all starts here. Uh, this is my home workshop. It's actually a two-car garage um, that there's no cars in it, so I have lots of space to. Uh, cut wood and do everything I need. Uh, once we cleared all the furniture out of the room, we put a tape line down because uh, what you want to do is you want to walk around and see how it feels and see how it looks and make sure that you could fit behind the tape line and, and that all your, your sizing is, is uh, appropriate for what you want to use it for. Um, here I started the framing. Um, the wall features uh, need to be just big enough to fit bottles on them, but no bigger. Anything else, you're wasting space in your room. Uh, I use pre-finished, pre-cut, uh, you know, thin pine. Uh, it's better than two by threes or two by fours, and it's uh, you know it's dimensionally uh, better. It's more stable, more straight. Uh, there's less sanding, less uh, you know refinishing. And uh, again, you're not we're not building something here that needs to hold a house up. So uh, size your wood and all your building materials appropriately. As you can see, I covered up the window there. Um, 
This is actually a uh, picture of uh, one of the TVs I was thinking of getting was a uh, Samsung 50 inch. I actually downsized to a, a little bit smaller. Uh, there are the two TVs mounted on the wall. Um, you can see the covered window. Uh, from the outside, it actually looks like a shade that's pulled down because that's, uh, that's pegboard. It's the, basically the white white on one side and, and, and press board on the other or whatever you want to call that stuff, hardboard. Uh, it's the one that's without the holes though, obviously. Um, you can see my uh, cat because there's uh, two strings hanging there. I actually connected the strings to the uh, wall mount clips, so you could you pull the strings down, you could pop the TV out whenever you want. Um, the white stuff on the wall there is actually not wood; it's cellular PVC. It's a great material because it's dimensionally stable. It doesn't care if it gets wet. You could you could cut really straight, perfect lines in it, and they're they're nice and even, and they don't change. It's not the strongest stuff, but you don't need it for this this application. Uh, here you can see um, routing the HDMI cables through the wall. It connects to an Apple TV in the, in the living room. Whether you have an Apple TV, Roku, or you want to stream from the TVs themselves, uh, it's up to you. Uh, I like the fact that the, with the Apple TV with the HDMI splitter allows me to show the same thing on all three TVs. So another, another thing about TVs, um, TVs are cheap. They're super cheap nowadays, so use them all over the place. Put them as put as many TVs in as you can fit, because they look nice. Uh, they really make a make a bar area look modern and uh, you know high end. And you can always default to a like a YouTube um, fireplace scene or a fish tank scene as a background, or you could connect through YouTube uh, through people's phones. Uh, you know, it's, it gives you so many options and as far as a, as far as a nice uh, decorative feature in your bar area. So the way I did a lot of these cuts are actually uh, um, with a circular saw, uh, a battery-powered circular saw. So um, it's, they're smaller. Uh, you're not tied to a to a, you know a cord that's going to kind of torque you in one direction or another. And you kind of just sink the blade in. You cut almost to the end, and you finish it off with a, either a, a sawzall or a, or or a jigsaw. Um, my background is not carpentry; it's engineering. So I'm able to design things very well. I build things uh, however I can, and uh, so if some of the things I've done here aren't what you would do standard, I understand, and it's because I've kind of taken a non-linear path to learning how to do carpentry, uh, but for the most part, it works out. So this is my third video, and uh, you know, thank you, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to get into more details on the future videos. Uh, talk to you later.